A week and a half ago, I told you the Blackhawks were going to win the Stanley Cup Finals and the Warriors were going to be my best bet in the series against Cleveland. And tonight, Golden State, just like the Blackhawks took care of business last night, it'll be the Warriors' turn this evening to finally end these NBA Finals. And I'm going to give you my free play and my breakdown on game number six and tell you once again why I'm not personally betting the game, even though I love the side tonight in just a moment. Hi everyone, Al DeMarco here, and this of course is going to be your Tuesday video report. I gotta tell you guys, uh, instead of watching ESPN, I think I've got to start watching the Weather Channel regularly. Uh, yesterday, for the second straight day, I had a best bet selection that was rained out. Now, the first one was on Sunday when I had St. Louis, hopefully, if before the rain, against Kansas City. So I recycled that play last night, and I told you to go with the Cardinals, not on the run line, but playing straight up against Minnesota, and the Cardinals delivered as a 3-2 win for free pick winner. But then yesterday, I also made the decision for the second time in three days to put my best bet at a discount here at the site, uh, making that play on the uh, game between Cleveland and Chicago, only $22 for you. And of course, that one got rained out at Wrigley. Uh, I just wanted to tell you here at the outset of the report that that play still stands today because both of your scheduled starters are going in the makeup game this evening at Wrigley. So nothing changes there. So let's just get that out of the way. Now, let's talk about a little basketball. First of all, congrats. Oh, a little baseball. First of all, congratulations going out to Gabriel DuPont. First 100 dime play of the season going last night. The Orioles plus $1.10 on the run line. The 4 nothing win over Philadelphia. You got it for only $39. A savings of $70 off the regular price. He is now 21 9 and and one with all 109 releases in all sports combined since he joined this site February of 2014. And in that stretch, $50 play, or excuse me, 59 plays or higher have made $10 betters a little over $28,800. Some great numbers for Gabriel DuPont. If you didn't get them yesterday, I'm not going to waste my time repeating them today. You can see them on the homepage. But the bottom line is this the guy has made $10 better since Thanksgiving. Over 21 grand. Okay, let's get to today's discounts before I break down the games here for you. And I have a free baseball play as well, so I'm going to take a look at the Mets Toronto game at City Field. First of all, turning once more for the half price play of the day to Steve Budin's number one NBA crew out of New York for their 50 dime winner, number 21 out of 29, and that is your game six side tonight. Matches their game one winner on the Warriors and their game two winner on the Cavaliers, each of which you got also for half price. They are eight and two in the NBA Finals over the past two seasons combined. All 50 dimers just like today and 65 and 44 with four pushes. Their overall record the past five seasons. You get it for half price simply by using the coupon code HALF, H-A-L-F. Now listen guys, I'm doing this video report in the wee hours of the morning. Not many of the handicappers have their plays up, but you know on the home page of the site, underneath the various coupons, I will often put heads up. And I like to tip you off if another handicapper has the same play or the opposite side and a big rated play as the play that I choose to discount for you. So remember, by 2 o'clock Eastern Time, come back to the site, look again, and if there's anything to point out in that heads up category, I will have that ready for you and at your disposal. Now, also uh, for the total tonight, 59 playoff winner number 19 out of 27 from Brad Wilton, his Warriors Cavaliers total. The game five total the other day was a push. I mean, it was a win, it was a loss, it was a push, depending on where and when you played it. There was just no rhyme or reason other than this. If you, <laughs> depending on which side of the fence you were on, uh, whether you had the under or the over, it didn't really matter. Either way, you had to hate uh, Andre Iguodala at one point in that game for the eight straight free throw misses, especially if you were siding on the over in that one. That's why you didn't get the over. If you were on the under, well, listen, guys, you've got to be blessed that Iguodala missed the free throw shots, but at the same time, each time they sent him to the line, it gave the Cavaliers another shot to uh, stop the clock and to get their offense cranked up. So how it fell on the uh, in a push situation is beyond me. But listen, he's got his 59 playoff winner number 19 out of 27 on the over-under. You can get it and save $85 on the process. Get it for just $14, just like game one over, game two under, game four under. You got all those for $14, saving $85. Bucks. Do the same thing today with coupon BRAD, B-R-A-D. FYI, Shawn Michaels. 
uh, yesterday, cashed in with his 50 dime run line winner with the Tigers plus $1.10 over Cleveland. $10 betters past 26 months have won over 15 grand. Today, 50 dime dog of the month in baseball. You save $77, get it for just 22 bucks by using coupon code Sean22, Sean22. Okay, let's get to the NBA here, guys. And listen, as I told you repeatedly, to me, it makes no sense to double dip is the phrase I like to use. When I have a huge, huge play, the biggest, one of the plays that matches the biggest of my career in the NBA, a 15 dime release on the Warriors, uh, minus almost two bills on the side. Well, listen, I'm up 3-2 in the series. What the hell do I have to bet the Warriors on tonight? But I'll tell you what, I still like the Warriors minus the three and a half points in this game. But from a financial strategy standpoint, it makes no sense to bet them here. Because, again, why am I double dipping? Um, listen, I like the Warriors. I think they close out the game, the series here in six games. This series has mimicked how the uh, second round series for the Warriors went against Memphis when they split the first two games at home, winning the first, losing the second, losing game three at Memphis, just like they did at Cleveland, coming back with the game four route, coming back from the, uh, for the game five uh, decisive win at home. And in game six against Memphis, look, they took care of business. They won that kind of easily on the road, laying five and a half points. They rolled 108 to 95. And as I said a couple of games ago in this series, listen, be honest with you, and you know it as well as I do. Yes, the Cavaliers have LeBron James, and they got nothing else. The Grizzlies were a better team because James just doesn't have anybody. And the other recurring theme that has been one of my points, and I've hammered home to you repeatedly here, and I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but look back. Have I not been right on the money with telling you that the travel and the time off between games would make such a difference in this series? No different than it did for Derrick Rose in the Chicago Cleveland series a month ago. Listen. We saw what happened in game number four where LeBron once again tried to strap the team on his back. And after three phenomenal games, he had an okay game. A great game by average NBA standards, but not the LeBron game and not the Cavaliers game that LeBron had to deliver for them to win game number four. And you saw what happened. But he was also playing with just one day's rest after another magnificent outing in game number three. I thought he'd come back re-energized and have a refreshing performance because the legs would be fresh going into game number five. And listen, he strapped the team on his back again, and he was just super in that uh, game five loss. 45 minutes played, 15 for 34 from the field, 14 rebounds, 11 assists, 40 points total. What's going to happen here tonight? This is the last shot for the Cavaliers. I say LeBron goes out shooting, but I say right now the Warriors have the mojo. Stephen Curry is playing with the swagger that early in this series he was missing. After that dreadful game number two, he did not have that swagger, but you saw it. You saw how he was draining those three-pointers. You saw those cra uh, crazy, uh, fancy uh, dribbling moves, the uh, shaking the Cleveland defenders, breaking their ankles. I mean, he's got the swagger back. The Warriors have their confidence back because the Warriors realize by going small, LeBron can go for 40 and they can still win. Yes, am I concerned that going into the fourth quarter of game number four, the last time they were in Cleveland, that was just a six-point game before the Cavaliers folded like a cheap suit and allowed the Warriors win by 21? Am I concerned that the Warriors were down by one point when LeBron hit that three-pointer with 7.47 to go in game number five on Sunday? Absolutely. But am I concerned with the fact that the Warriors are a three-and-a-half-point favorite here tonight? Nope. Not at all, because you have seen throughout this series, it doesn't matter who's playing in the backcourt, whether it's, you know, Mike Miller, who they trotted out for a few minutes, James Jones, Amon Shumpert, J.R. Smith, uh, Matthew Della, the De <laughs> Della, I hate that damn guy's name. Oh, who you know who I'm talking about. I don't care who they send out there. It doesn't matter. They haven't been able to contribute anything offensively because the Golden State rotation it's not necessarily always Curry. It's not necessarily always Clay Thompson. It doesn't matter who is out there in terms of the Warriors rotation. The Cavaliers guards expend so much energy trying to stop them. They've got nothing going on the offensive end. 
Uh, Dave Black, the Cleveland coach, made a really wacky, strange move, as far as I'm concerned. I know some experts think it was a great move. They were down 8 too early. He went small. He took Mozgrov out after he had that magnificent game number four, and he went with J.R. Smith, who hit the four three-pointers early and finished with 14 points. But then Smith went scoreless in the second half when they started him and went small. Listen, if the Cavaliers want to compete tonight, they need a combined 30, 35 points from Tristan Thompson and Mozgrov in the up front because they ain't getting anything from the backcourt. But I'm convinced that Blatt will once again go small, and that's okay. You go small, you're even playing further into the Warriors' hands because their depth, their physicality, their athleticism will ultimately be the downfall. And LeBron's going to have an MVP performance for a losing team, perhaps, but it doesn't matter. I think Golden State is the only way you bet this game tonight if you're going to bet it on the side. Now, again, you're talking to a guy who has a big play on the Warriors in the series, but if you made me play this game and I didn't have the series play, my best bet tonight would not be in baseball. It would be on the Warriors. Now, for your other complimentary play tonight, I'm going with the New York Mets. I'm not willing to put the Mets on the run line, and that strategy certainly played last, paid out last night when I did the same with the St. Louis Cardinals. But I do like the Mets minus $1.45 to $1.50, even $1.55 at home straight up against Toronto. Last night, very unusual, Mets two outs, two run rally in the bottom of the 11th inning to nip the Blue Jays 4-3, snap Toronto's uh, great winning streak. What was it? Uh, 12 strike games to Blue Jays had won going into that one. Um, Mets the 4-3 win last night. They've now won four of their last five on this homestand. Uh, actually, the Blue Jays had won 11 in a row when I think of it. It was not 12. They were going for number 12 last night. You know, here's something interesting. You know, the Blue Jays are five games under 500 at home. The Mets at City Field this season, 14 games over 500 at 25 and 11. They are 10-0 and lifetime at home in the series. Oh, you want to talk about Matt Harvey? Yeah, let's talk about him. He has been dreadful in his last four starts, 7.2 earn run average, eight home runs allowed, including three in his last start against the Giants. But you know what? In his first eight starts this season, he only gave up four homers. This is an anomaly. I just don't see this happening again. I think Harvey's just too good of a pitcher, and we know it as well as I do. He'll turn it around tonight. That's why I'm willing to lay the price with the Mets, because I also know the Blue Jays cannot continue to average almost six runs a game and hit three homers every single game. They're also going with Scott Copeland, who's making the spot start for Aaron Sanchez, who's on the disabled list. Uh, first spot start for him, uh, spot start. First spot start. Say that three times quickly. Go ahead. I dare you. Uh, very effective. One run, six hits, and seven innings of a 7-2 win at Miami back on June 10th, just six days ago. But listen, that was the Marlins. They don't hit much. I'm going to go once again with the Mets in this one to make it two in a row in the series. I'm coming off a 2-0 sweep last night with my free plays. Not only did I give you the Cardinals straight up on the money line, but I also cashed in last night. Uh, what was my other play? Um, was it the Detroit? No. Isn't that awful, guys? I can't remember my own best bet, my own free play. Oh, the Orioles on the run line. That was my play in the 4 nothing win over Philadelphia. So um, it's been a strange run with the free plays. Thursday and Friday, 2-0 sweep, 2-0 sweep. Saturday and Sunday, 0 for 2, 0 for 2. Last night, 2-0. Go figure. What's more important to me? 11 of 15 winning days. That's the number that I'm most concerned about for me and for you as well. Good luck, everybody, and I'll catch you again tomorrow, and uh, we'll do this one more time. Bye-bye, everyone.